All right, so this video is gonna be on how to convert your 240 volt electric heater to operate on a low voltage thermostat. This unit and most of these units, they have a switch on the back, a setting. It's usually a thermostat switch. It's just really inconvenient to access and obviously you can't program it. So I'm gonna show you how you can modify this. I'm going to take it down and take the cover off and then I'll show you inside. All right, so I got the unit off the wall and obviously it's unplugged. And this is basically all there is to it. Um, this is the model I have. It's OAS 05000, so it's a 5000 watt heater. And they're all pretty much the same. Basically, you have a contactor. You have a relay switch here which is the, the knob on the back. You can hear it click on and off. Uh, the relay, the, thermo, the thermostat has a probe here that goes inside and senses the temperature. Uh, contactor, this is the hot wires coming in. And then over here you have a, this is a thermal cutoff switch. So at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll shut everything off. And then this is supposed to be uh, fan delay uh, switch. So basically it only closes once the unit reaches 110 degrees. Uh, mine actually doesn't work. It's always closed. So the fan basically kicks on as soon as you turn the unit on, which doesn't matter. It's just, it's just a comfort thing. Basically it doesn't, with that switch, you don't get that blast of cold air. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and that's basically it. I'll show you the wiring diagram for this unit. So there's a bunch of extra stuff here that I don't have. Um, you can see the dashed out lines here. That's for the 10,000 watt unit. So I only have, the resistor here is the heating element. That's the contactor. That motor is the fan motor. And then those are the two limit switches, the thermal cutoff and the fan delay switch. And you can see, uh, my unit, the 5000 watt unit, has one, one tick, so it's got one element. So you can ignore these two resistors here, these two heating elements. And also, the dash lines are basically options. Uh, so this is an option, which I don't have. That's a summer fan switch. So in the summertime, you can turn the, the fan motor on without turning the uh, heating element on. Also, these fuses I don't have. That's for the 10,000 watt unit so basically and these two terminals go to the thermostat switch so when the thermostat closes current goes through the coil closes the contactor and it completes the the circuit through this heating element back to from l2 to l1 so that's basically all there is to it and what I'm going to show you is how you can modify this. You can basically delete the uh, existing thermostat switch and you can use a low voltage one. I'm using a, a Wi-Fi one so that I can control it from my phone, but basically any 24 volt AC thermostat you can do this with. Here's my revised wiring diagram. So you can see this is the exact same as the stock heater. And then I added a, 20, a 240 volt to 24 volt AC transformer, and then a 240 volt relay. Uh, it's really important that you get a relay that is 24 volt AC triggered, not 24 volt DC. A lot of the relays on Amazon and stuff are 24 volt DC, and if you try to trigger them with an AC signal, they'll basically, uh, the, the coil will, the current will go to zero and the coil will unlatch the switch many times a second and it'll just wear out the relay much faster. So you definitely want to get a 24 volt AC triggered relay or you can use a AC to DC converter somewhere in there. But that's all you need. I also have shown a terminal block here. Uh, this is my external thermostat that's going to be mounted on the wall of the garage. And then the thermostat wires go to a terminal block and then the terminal block goes to those devices. This is totally optional. You also want to make sure that the current reading of your relay 
has basically just has to match the breaker that feeds your unit. So for a 5,000 watt unit, uh, 30 amp is all you need. So my relay contact readings are rated for 30 amp. And my transformer is 24 volt AC, 20, 240 volt AC to 24 volt AC. So I'm gonna put those two items in there and then wire it up. I should probably also show you the part numbers that I'm using here. This is a this is the transformer and it's part number 90-T40F3. Uh, and then I got this on Amazon and I couldn't find a 24 volt AC triggered relay on Amazon, so I got this from uh, Mouser. And the part number here, this is a TE connectivity part, and the number is T9CP1A54-24. A lot of these relays have multiple inputs, so this relay you can input 120, 208, or 240 volts to get 24 volt on the output. So I'm using 240 volt, um, but I did, when I wired this heater, I did run... Uh, a three wire conductor so I do have a neutral in here so I could actually use the 120 volt I could connect the the black and the white wire of the transformer to the white and either the black or the red doesn't matter of the line voltage and then use the 120 to 24 volt uh, feature of the transformer I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use the neutral at all, but it is connected to my panel and I could do that. So if you can't find uh, a transformer, you could try searching for a doorbell transformer. I know doorbell transformers are usually 120 to 24 volt AC, so that's an option. You just have to make sure that you have a neutral wire. All right, so I just got that transformer installed. I'm just using uh, sheet metal self self drilling sheet metal screws, uh, three quarter inch is probably a bit long just what I had so if you're using three quarter inch just make sure look on the other side of this this sheet metal here make sure you're not going to hit anything now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plug this in if you're gonna plug yours your heater and you got to be really careful but I just want to confirm now that I have 24 volts at the output so Okay, 27.4 volts. So it's not exactly 24 volts. You, I might look up in my thermostat, but I'm sure it's got a, a wide range. I'm sure 27 volts is not going to be a problem for my thermostat. Another thing I want to point out is, now that the power's hooked up, you guys probably can't hear it, but there is a slight humming sound. It's really faint. Uh, that's the transformer. Transformers always hum a little bit like that. That's pretty normal. So uh, if you hear a humming sound, it's coming from your transformer and I wouldn't worry about it. I'm using these little uh, spade connectors to connect every wire. Uh, you need them for the relay because they just have blades on them. Um, but in general, they're just really handy because you can connect stuff and disconnect stuff. You can get the crimp ones. I'm soldering them, but uh, either works. Uh, I also wanted to point out this little thing that I made here. It's basically just a splitter. So it's for this terminal here on the relay. Because it goes to the white wire on the relay and to the blue wire on the transformer, I need to I need to basically connect two wires to one terminal. So I just created a little Y cable. It's got the female end there that connects into the relay and then the two male ends which will connect to the transformer and to the thermostat. So I'm just soldering these, these little blade connectors on and when I'm soldering them I like to strip extra wire. If you look at the red one there, I strip too much wire, I crimp it on and then I bend the extra wire back so it's, and then I solder it. So it's a really good connection if somebody yanks the wire, uh, it's not going to pull the, uh, not going to pull the blade connector back off. Alright so I got my thermostat wires coming in here, I have my little connectors on them. The green and yellow wire, I believe, are for the fan and for cooling, which I don't need. So I only need 
the red, which is 24 volts, blue, which is the common, well, it's also 24 volts because it's AC. Uh, and you need a blue wire if you're using a smart thermostat. Uh, basically powers the thermostat um, when all, uh, all the time. Uh, and then the white wire is the heater wire, so that's what's going to trigger the relay. Uh, yeah, so green and yellow not being used here. I um, I put them through a, se a separate knockout here in the heater. Uh, you're not supposed to have low voltage and high voltage stuff really in the same compartment or same conduit or same knockout or anything like that. If you don't have a second knockout, it's not a huge deal, I'm guessing, but it is um, it is just something to be aware of. It's against code to put uh, low voltage and high voltage together. So I put a second uh, knockout and connector, and basically I'm going to connect these up. Uh, here's the relay. I'm just going to screw it in here. Uh, and this is the original thermostat, and it does have the same type of connector on it. So all I have to do is pull this connector off and then connect it to my to my relay um, and if I ever want to I, I don't have to modify this at all if I ever want to go back to the original stock set like setup I can just take it off the relay connect it back and then take my stuff out um, but yeah so basically the red wire is gonna go to the yellow wire on the transformer the blue wire is going to go to the blue wire, but it's going to go also to the relay. So I'm going to put the blue wire on this one and then this blue wire on this one. So that's how I'm going to connect that. <clears throat> and then the white wire is going to uh, the other side of the coil. So right here. That's where that's going. And then this... And this, that's the normally open terminal, and that's the common terminal. So I'm going to connect the two wires that were on the thermostat to those two terminals. All right, so it's all wired up now. Uh, you can see we have the red wire from the thermostat going to the yellow wire on the transformer. Blue wire from the thermostat going to the terminal on the relay, which also goes to the blue wire on the thermostat. These two red wires are the original wires that were on the built-in thermostat. And then the white wire from the uh, new thermostat will trigger the relay. Uh, when the thermostat closes the switch between red and white, it'll apply voltage here. It'll close the relay, and then these two wires will be shorted out, which will close the contactor, and, and the unit will fire up. I... Connected all the uh, wires just for the, somewhere to put them, even though the green and the yellow are not being used, they're just connected anyway. Uh, so as a reminder, this is 24 volt AC, so make sure if you're testing yours that you put set it to AC. And we're just going to connect the blue and the red here and 27.3, which is I think is exactly what we had when we measured it at the transformer, so that's good. Okay, I found a scrap piece of wire, so just gonna jump these. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but it did turn on. This is all low voltage, so I'm not too worried about doing it. Not sure if you can hear it, but the heater's on, so everything looks like it's working. There is currently an extreme cold warning in effect. Hey Google, turn the barn heater on. Sure, changing the thermostat to heat. 